Welcome back to 101. What you doing? I'm watching this awesome show. Uh, I mean, like, what? Okay, so what's that? A DVD player? I thought it was a pink thing. It's a pink DVD player. Okay, so how does it work? I don't know, but you know what? I actually might know a guy who would. Okay, um, what's his name? Dana Lee. And what does he know? You know what? Check this out. One of the things is, like, you said 60 years, and I think that's probably yeah. a very key point. The, the television system as we know it has been around that long, and it uses a huge amount of spectrum spaces. It's called a lot of TV channels, take up a lot of room, and there's only so much radio transmission space out there. Dana Lee graduated from Ryerson School of Radio and Television Arts in 1977, back when it was still a polytechnical institute. Then, he went on to work at Chum Television for 20 years, becoming the operations supervisor of Much Music. Dana helped research and redesign the original Much facility at 299 Queen Street West, optimizing it for maximum flexibility and functionality. One day, he was approached by a lighting director with a technical question. Can you explain color correction to me, or color balance, or, or lighting, or what's really inside a camera anyway? And that's how the teaching thing began. Dana also holds a Master's of Education from New York University. He is now the director of Ryerson's Master's Program in Media Production. A semi-finalist in TVO's Best Lecture Competition and winner of Ryerson's Teaching Excellence Award in 2007, Dana is described by his students as a power surge. I try and make science and technology accessible to people. The more people understand things of a technical nature, the better they're able to use it in their creative process. Dana is also the author of Television Technical Theory Unplugged, which was revamped and republished worldwide in 2009. It is the go-to guide for television and teaching facilities around the globe. He'll also teach you how to make a teleprompter for $10. Check out his YouTube channel, Dana Lee 1000. That was really cool. I think I'm gonna go check him out. Not not in that way. I mean, I'm gonna go see what he's about, like techni technically. All right, you go see what he's about. I'm gonna stick around and watch this. All right, catch you in a bit. Hey Dana, what you what you working on? Oh hi Nate, this is um, a DVD player and I'm having some problems. It's not working right at all. Uh, that's that's kind of funny because I wanted to ask you about that. Well, let me show you. I got one. A DVD is basically a plastic disc with a bunch of pits and bumps in it. And really, what those bumps and pits represent are actually the movie that you're trying to watch. Or if you buy a computer DVD. Those are pieces of computer data. Another way to think about those pits and bumps is, well, think of it sort of like Braille. You know, lettering, if you can rub your hands over it and you can interpret it, those bumps actually become letters that you can understand, letters mm -hmm. and numbers and symbols. Uh, okay, so it's like a language. Yeah, that's it, it's kind of like a language. And for that, you need a translator. I just happen to have that. Let me show you here. I got a little laser beam. That laser beam comes along and it reads all those pits and bumps on the disc. Now, the way it reads them is the laser beam shines light down on the disc and it either reflects off or doesn't reflect off or actually, I guess, reflects off at a different angle depending whether it's hit a pit or a bump. Hmm. And so you end up now with two reflections of laser light coming off. And that, whether the reflection's gonna happen or not, that gets turned back into zeros and ones, binary computer data. Wow, that is, uh, that is some complicated gadgetry. And when you put a DVD in your DVD player, you know, you put it on the label side up. Yes. Okay, so it goes inside the DVD player, the disc spins around, and that means that all the laser beam has to do is just go back and forth. The laser beam itself doesn't have to move. Mm. Not like my laser pointer that I was moving around a moment ago. So this just goes back and forth on a little track as the disc spins. And there's one more important thing to remember about this. The disc, as it turns, actually speeds up and slows down Ooh. depending which part of the disc that you're reading. Because on the outside of the disc, there's going to be a lot more data around the outside because there's a larger circumference than when you get to the middle where there's only a small circumference and not as much room. And you don't want to be reading that off too fast, so it actually slows down as the laser beam works its way into the middle. That, that's absolutely crazy. And that's still only half of it. We've taken all the zeros and ones off the disc now because now we've read back the disc from a laser but we've got to convert those zeros and ones back into the picture content that we had originally. Because all those picture elements take up so much room, 
you wouldn't be able to fit them all on one disk, and thus we have a thing called compression. Compression? Yeah. So what compression basically does is it looks at one frame after another of the 30 frames per second that we have in television, and it looks between them and says, what information is similar between each one of those frames? It essentially takes that information, and if it doesn't think it's necessary or that it repeats itself, it throws that information away, and that saves us a lot of room on the disk. I love it when technology is lazy. It makes me feel better about my life. <laughs> well, I don't know where I call it lazy. I would call it, well, efficient. Except sometimes it's not so efficient, because you can overdo that, and you can end up with all kinds of problems trying to play back the information later. So compression is sort of one of those things we can save space, and if we're really smart, it works well. And if we're not so smart, we get into all kinds of problems. So DVD players do all that kind of work, and actually, except for some of the menu structure, CDs do the same sort of thing. Compression, decompression, turning it back into sound. Blu-ray players, of course, are a whole other thing, even more complicated and more detailed because you can get much more information mm. on a Blu-ray disc. That's how it works. Wow. Okay, well, I will keep that in mind, and I'll keep you in mind next time I need some help with this stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, let me fix this one first, and then I'll get back to you. <laughs> Coming up, we get drunk at a bar. For science. For science. But first, ladies, how long do you keep your makeup? Mm, a month? Half a year. Two weeks. Two weeks? As long as until I don't like it anymore.